I'm Miss Murray and today we're going to talk about osmosis. What if I asked you to make a cake using these two eggs? You're probably wondering what's going on because you've observed that one is shrunken and small and one is large and swollen. The reason for this is a process called osmosis and you probably would not want to bake with these eggs. So we're going to explore this process in today's video and I'm going to show you something that you can actually do at home as we investigate this process. So what I have in front of me is a cup with 0% salt solution. So I added no salt to this, just 100 milliliters of water. In this cup, I have a 5% solution. So I added five grams of salt to 100 milliliters of water. This is a 10% solution where I added uh, 10 grams of salt to 100 milliliters of water. And then at the end, we have a 15% solution. So I added 15 grams of salt to 100 milliliters of water. I also have some potato slices. You can also use at home, if you're doing this, carrots or even grapes. All three of these items are made up of plant cells. Now I want you to remember what you know about plant cells. They have cell membrane and a cell wall. And remember the difference between the two. The cell membrane lets things in and out of the cell, while the cell wall is for structure and support. So these are going to act as our cells. So looking at these items I have, I've got eight potato slices and I've got these four cups. I want you to think, given these materials, how would you set this up at home? So give it a thought. Next, I want you to think about your variables. What are our constants? What is your independent? What's your dependent? And what's your control group? Also your hypothesis. So the question that we're answering is how do different solutions affect potato slices? So think about it and record it on your science lab sheet. We're going to set this up and come back in 30 minutes to see what's happened. Use a toothpick because we are going to do two slices per cup. So use a toothpick to mark one of the strips so you can tell them apart and you're going to put two in each cup. Before you place the slices in, we need to take the initial mass of each potato slice and record it on our data sheet. You can use a food scale at home. You'll place each slice, take the mass in grams, and then record it. So for these two slices, they each weigh 8.5 grams. You'll do that for each slice and make sure that you record it so you have something to compare to. Welcome back. So we're going to see what our results are. So we're going to take out each slice, make sure that you dry it off or this can mess up your results if there's extra water on the slice. So I'm going to dry each one off and I did mark it with the toothpick. So I know that this is strip one. You're going to weigh each strip for a final mass and record it. So we will weigh and I'm going to record that the one in 15% salt solution has lost mass. So it has gone down to 5.7 grams from an original 8.5. You're going to do this for each glass until we have filled out our data table. What do you notice has happened? Why do you think that the mass for the potatoes in just water has increased? And why do you think the mass for the potatoes in salt has decreased. Do you think the salt or the water has moved in or out of the cells to either make it shrink or become larger? Your teacher may have you do the percent change in mass, which are the N2 columns on your data table. If so, please see the formula at the bottom for getting the total change in mass and the percent change. Now I want you to think back to those eggs at the beginning of the video. I had the one that was shrunk and I had the one that was swollen. Using what you've learned about the process of osmosis, I want you to think about what has happened to each egg, whether 
water came in or out to make it shrink or swell. All right, and that's all for today. And make sure that you do this at home. If you, again, carrots, potatoes, or grapes, get your results and let your teacher know what you found out.